Brought to you by Curtis Raymond. Okay, so how do you get to here? How are you guys going to get to these babies? Well, they're the, actually the adult looking children, but we're going to do this simulation. And we're going to fill out our chart. And before we started, you guys wrote down these directions. So let's, the first coin toss is going to be determine whether it's a boy or a girl. Okay. The second coin toss from that point on would determine if it's dominant or recessive. Then you're going to fill out the chart, so we'll switch that in a second. And then when it comes to drawing, you're going to actually start with the eyes. You're going to trace it. Everything's the scale. So back to this. How do you get to that from this chart that we're going to fill out? How do you get from to that from, say, this? It's like this. You're going to use these letters, and they really represent segments of DNA that ultimately get transcribed and translated and ultimately you see it right here being a physical trait, like free earlobes are attached, right? So let's go back to this. All right. Now, um, actually, I've got it loaded here. Let, so let's walk through a couple things. I'm going to write some things in here and give you some pointers of, of things that we see most students mess up. So first, you got your paper here. And it probably will be wise for you to do this. All right. Which And then starting here, so we're going to skip over this part. You guys, focus. And I'll give you a couple examples. As you do your coin toss, you circle as you go along, and you go all the way through this. So let's, let me do that. All right. All right, so I got this. Get it set over here. So I do a coin toss. Say I flip my coin and I get heads. So then I would write capital R. I flip it again and then I'm going to write that. Now let's say the next time, how do we know what the next time is? We're walking down through the sheet and we're using these letters. Do not make this mistake of using um, R's all the way down. That's Because they use R's and then they use V's and then as you scroll further down, they use R again and A's and stuff like that. So I'm going to... Um, all right, so question back there as we were recording. Now, let's say the second time I get this, lowercase, lowercase. Then I'd go again, come back over here, and that's where I would circle which trait I'm going to use. You need to circle this as you go along so you can turn your sheet in and finish delivering your baby at home if you run out of time. Hopefully you won't. Okay. Now, even if I get like this, let's say this is X's, uh, you know, I'll do B's. This right here is the father's genes. This is the mother's genes. We're, we're not necessarily writing it as a genotype. We're recording inside here what they send. Off to the side, you can interpret it like this. Okay? This is what the child has. But remember, each parent sends half the genes. Big, the biggest mistake we see is hair color and eye color. So this is what I'm going to do. First, you've got to flip twice for hair color and eye color. So let's say I get this, and then the father sends his a, little a, the mother sends a little a as well. So they both flipped tails. Then the next time, the father sent, sent a capital letter, heads. Then the mother still sent tails. So this is what we have. That's how you should write it. However, this, we have students do write it like this. So imagine this is the wrong way of doing it. What's wrong with that picture? It's the correct way of interpreting the genotype, but you are saying that the father sent A's and the mother sent B's? So this is some kind of mutant combination. It doesn't work that way. So you don't write it like that. You've got to write A, B, A, B. And then over on the side, you can write what the genotype would look like so you can properly interpret. So go and find the next page and tell me what color hair would this combination, would this genotype produce as a phenotype? Yes? Wait. Okay. So how are we supposed to do that? Come over here, those who have your paper, find little A, little A, big B, big B on here. Oh, dark, 
Alright, what did I say? I can't read that, sir. You have? Oh, yeah. yeah Alright, no, right here. Dark something. Oh, dark blonde. Regular blonde. Right here. What? Right there. Alright, so that, in that case, it would be regular blonde. Okay, the same is the case for eye color, but in all the rest of these, it's one letter in each box because one parent sent a letter and the other parent sent a letter. Does that make sense? Okay, um, on the paper, I need to correct something here. On your paper, it, it doesn't say texture. It, right here it says hair body. Right here it says hair body. Okay. Before, so we're almost ready to start. I want to give you one last note. This right here. Nose tip. Nose tip. Trying to find the end up. So on your nose tip, scroll all the way back here. See where it says nose tip. Read this little line here and this line. What you're going to do is you're going to get your results and you're going to do a second coin toss. So we're at that point. That's what you're going to do. All right. Now, we're pretty much ready to start. Let's go back to what you're going to do. You're going to get your chart filled out. You're going to circle the traits as you go along, and then you're going to draw the child starting with the eyes. For those of you who are artistically inclined and you want to freehand it, that's fine, but you kind of got an idea of what the babies look like from our first class. There we go. Are there any questions? Okay, I'm going to pass out coins, and you're going to start making your babies. Results now. Before we do the big reveal of the other children, let's go back to the question I asked you a couple seconds ago. I said, go through your packet. We've already made our children, and you'll notice that each one of these traits. Here, all right. So here's a here's genotype. This is phenotype. So the genotype is the letter combination. Phenotype would be the actual description. So most of these most of the traits when you drew them, you had two choices for phenotype, right? And, and so think about it like that. The round allele, square allele. You can have two, two squares and you're going to be two little r's and you're going to be square. That means you have two of the recessive allele. You can have two of the dominant allele and you'll be dominant or a dominant and a recessive allele and you'll be dominant in this case. So what I ask you to do is find the cases where in this packet where it's, a, it's a, it goes what we call it going beyond Mendel like this. And I have it on the screen here, so let's do this. All right, take a look. Um, before we do that, let me just go back here, make sure we are recording. Okay, good. What do you, what's the difference between this and the other two? How many phenotypes do you have? Three. In this case, the one, the heterozygous, the one that has one of each, uh, has a third phenotype. Now, we're going to learn later that we don't write the genotypes that way for that, that particular pattern. Now, let's look at another pattern. What it was the, there was actually four things that aren't regular dominant recessive. So what was another where you had more than two phenotypes? Eye, Eye color and hair color. So here's the letters. Now look at all these different genotypes and the different phenotypes. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different phenotypes just with two allele pairs versus one allele pair. All right. Now, same thing with eye color. All right. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is there's certain genes that are on the same chromosome, and that's what this was trying to show, the linked genes. Remember nose tip? What you had to do is you had to, when you got over here, for nose tip, you had to flip it a second time to see if if the size of the nose stayed with the size of the ear, or if you basically flipped these two. And that's what you did with nose tip. All right. So I think we kind of got the gist of it. Now it's time for our big reveal of all various classes. Uh, so this was the first one. All right, we'll put this back here. All right. Uh, some of you could, uh, well, let's look at, here's. Wait. 
Uh, all right, we're gonna. All right, so uh, we had a lady, some ladies select a pile. This is not the one that they wanted me to pick. They definitely didn't want me to pick that one. <laughs> all right, this one. I guess their parents decided to let them be free, uh, free spirit and let them do their hair however they wanted. But let's go ahead and go to. Uh, uh, I'm not going to show you the green lipstick, but all right. So here's one. All right. Now what it, this one drew theirs. Uh, and remember, you guys, every single time, we said it's got to be drawn to scale. So they need to scale, but what made the difference between that and, say, that and, say, this one is, this person put a lot more space in between the nose and the, and the lips and gave them, like, I don't know, this looks like the it's former governor. Yeah, I'm the governor. Okay, yeah, never mind. Okay, so uh, that's some of the things that we saw. Let's... Uh, Let's go through this quickly because we want to finish. Here's some more from our class. Oh, okay. We already saw uh, this one. Now this one got some interesting. Uh, look down in the face. You ever seen the movie Avatar? In the face, it's kind of. Okay. Now one of the things that um, was asked when we did this, some students were like. Well, what about pigment? Let's go back to this for one second. And, you know, I don't want to make this too long of a video, but this is from a select gene pool. It's like representative of this. What they didn't put was color or what we call skin tone because that's, a, that's like the hair and eye color, but even more complex. It's what's called a polygenic trait. All right? So it's, like I said, it's more complex. So if you look at this, see where we have... Uh, th you got two allele pairs, meaning a choice of A's and B's. Add in like four more of these, like a, a C and a D, and that's what contributes to what we call our ethnic characteristics of skin tone. It's a lot more complex. Okay, so let's kind of wind down. We got this one. We got movie star, man. Yeah. Oh, wow. Lady hair, dreamy. Okay. Um, there we go. That's that's, that's what I thought was like a okay. Um, again, so not every student said had pigment. We got this one here. All right. Very bright eyes. All right. Um, yes, you can hear the proud parents. All right. All right. Now, this is someone from seventh period. They actually looks very similar to the mom. I'm not going to show you the picture of the mom. Okay. Again, this is a simulation only. Okay. Again, you can see the spacing. <laughs> All right. All right. We'll, we'll do... Uh, okay. This one decided to make it into a character and give them a little tiny body. All right. This was a request that we put this one... Hey, all right. The, uh, the genes you have are the genes you have. However... What you allow your child to do with your genes and hair style, and we've been around here seeing all the you know dyed you know dyed hair. That's not a genetic thing. That's a cosmetic thing. All right. So let's go back to one of our first original ones, and um, very proud parent now. And, okay, and we'll finish with these two. All right, because uh, the parent of this child has already decided that they're going to do some matchmaking with this one. Why is her hair so perfect? All right, let's try and get this. There we go. All right. All right, so that's our little variation of the face exercise. That's not the match we had. That's not the match you had? No, Cole is supposed to go with Grace. She's prettier. Oh, yeah, well, okay. What you're, what you're hearing in the background is students arguing over who she gets to match up. Once again, this exercise has revealed a lot of the real-world behavior that we see.